Reveille, donks. Look at us now, tip to tip. This is our life. This is our passion. That's the spirit we bring to this show. I'm Luke Thomas. I'm Brian Campbell. This is Morning Combat. Oh, yeah, Monday, Monday, but not a regular one. A holiday, Monday, Memorial Monday. Day. So good to me. It's Morning Combat, and this is a special holiday edition. How about a little bit mailbag? All right, how about we put two hands under that bag and puff it up? I'm Brian Campbell, the BBC with that BDE. What half of your MK duo? And Luke, on this holiday, what we're not recording it on a holiday. Um, Luke Thomas from Washington, D.C. I don't know what I was teeing you up for, but all I know, Luke, is you're here, I'm here, and this one's for the soldiers, the ones that have fallen in battle. I would say any service member, not merely soldiers, because you can get sailors, you can get uh, Marines, you can get airmen, and it goes on from there. But uh, yes, this is... You Luke, too, right? You can get semen, you disgusting little motherfucker in the back of an Arby's. That's what you can do. But uh, this is a day for folks who might be confused. I, I on, on, on Memorial Day, I'll walk around here and people will be like, thank you for your service. And I'm like, right, that's not today. That's not today. <laughs> you can save that for Veterans Day. Today is the day where we honor the fall in BC. For folks who don't know, if it's not too late, you're watching this and you actually do live in the area, um, you can go lay flowers at uh, graves at Arlington Cemetery. It's volunteer. They, they take volunteers. You can show up and then place uh, flowers there. So I recommend everyone do that once in their life. It is a stirring experience when you go from guy like 18 years old, 19 years old, 19 years old, 18 years old, 19 yes. years old. It's fucking insane, you know? And the, indeed. Well, uh, we are here for you on this holiday. I mean, I don't see your, the other shows that we compete with for all these awards that we win, sh putting out great content on holidays, but we'll do that for you. Recorded a couple days or so in advance due to the space time continuum. But yes, Monday, May 29th, 2023. And Luke, we solicited through the powers of social media to our viewers sex. And it turns out a lot of them have have done that before. <laughs> Look, they paid for it. Just like all your no hardcore pornography. Yeah, we solicited questions to our great audience, and we have received a pack full delivered to us by our fine producer, Mikey Mormal of CBS Sports. So reminder: we're normally here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You already know that. Tip our waitresses. Shout out to Showtime Sports, CBS Sports. Uh, follow us below at the social channels. I'm sure there's 30 days of free Showtime at the end of that Showtime.com rainbow. So why don't you check that out for all the finest in combat sports and beyond. And Luke, uh, I don't, do I have merch in front of me? Normally, I'm, that's the only thing I'm wearing. But, you know, we got great merch as well at Morning Combat dot store. Uh, Luke, any Memorial Day traditions beyond what you mentioned? Or can we get into these questions? Um taking my uh, so I, I think a lot of cities are like this but um, where i live it's this way we're on memorial day weekend is when they open all the citywide pools and oh, uh some of the pools in the city are trifling some of them are actually like amazingly good so i found a couple that are like were like shockingly very nice they're free to dc residents and uh my daughter freaking loves the pool so i'm gonna take her there all right very very important question this is not a bit at all I'm going to assume you're a public piss in the pool guy because, you know, you can't trace that. There's no receipts, right? But are you a public um, piss in the pool guy when your own family is in that pool, Luke? That's where we would know, you know, how. Where so I haven't been yet, but I'm not against it in principle. Um, everyone just <laughs> bathing in my urine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like a hell's come, angel come, standing over a sink, right? Yeah. Come shower in my piss. Yeah, um, all right. Uh, enough of that bullshit. Look, let's roll on here. <laughs> this today is a holiday oh, you celebration. See what Mikey, you see what my, Mikey wrote in the chat? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Our, yeah, our Kelly Thomas over there, indeed. Uh, this is for the fallen troops, Luke, and this is for our fans. And, um, you know, in hindsight, should Showtime Legal have edited out that, that Pat Tillman joke I made, the timing, the delivery, Luke, it was pretty exceptional, right? That one time, remember that? Yeah, time? exceptionally fucking stupid, and it ruined yeah. the whole thing because it didn't come out till like nine weeks later. Uh, let's start off with a question from MK viewer Max Vermeer. And Luke, this donk says if the UFC announced that from now on a BMF belt would be introduced to every single weight class, good lord, Max Vermeer, yes. which two fighters from each weight class should fight for it? Do you want to well, do that? That's not this a bad question. 
Uh, all right, let me think about this. So I'm opening at up lightweight. The UFC you're, at lightweight, you're right. getting it. Say again. True. Let, let's start a flyweight. Men's fly. Well, the only yeah, men's flyweight here, Luke. Um, Brandon Moreno, the champion. Could he fight? Could he try to unify the flyweight belt with the BMF belt, Luke? Against yeah. who? Against who? I'm not sure who would be that guy on the other end in terms of that. I've said Henry Cejudo, but they don't want to do it that way. Yeah. Maybe uh, him against Figgy number four for five for the uh, no. BMF. To- See, this is why this is lame. Let's just have one BMF title. Why do we have to have one for every division? But for the sake of it, Luke. Um, I'll, say this. Weight- I'll say at 145, you know who it is. It's Taporia Max. and Emmett. Taporia and Emmett. Ooh, that'd be that'd be hellacious. There. Sick. I mean, they're gonna fight, and that is a that one could qualify. Yes, Max could qualify too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a yeah, dude. This is why the BMF thing is stupid. They're they're, they're just putting it on there to sell pay per views. I mean, they're just. I mean, it's got nothing yeah. to do with anything. Yeah. Here. Uh, just to close though, to get so that Max can feel good, Luke. Who are you picking at women's featherweight? <laughs> dude, I okay. <laughs> Do they have any women's featherweights left besides Amanda? Uh, I think um, what's her name is teaching class right now, Luke. What was her name? She used to fight for a title at one forty-five. She's oh, from the Canada. Canadian? Yeah, yeah, uh, the Canadian. Not Norma yeah, Dumont, thanks. but uh, I forget her name. Yeah, um, the chick, God, the chick bit. who fought, the chick who fought the other chick. Yeah, this is great content right now. No, Luke. No, I'm, I'm okay. really glad we're recording this and everyone's listening yeah. because it's very, very good. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking at UFC.com slash rankings right now, and literally yeah. under Amanda Nunes it, as the featherweight champion, there's not a fucking person listed. And there never has been since the division yeah. was first birthed. Amazing. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Moving on. This is from Screw You. Screw you. You know, screw you, right? Uh, with the whole Loma Haney scoring debate going on, what was the three most absurd judging or referee decisions on your memory luke of modern or so combat sports lore what what do you reach for what do you reach around to when you're talking about the the go-to of the worst judging or referee decisions in uh in combat the worst judging one again i've said it before i'll say it again uh especially under the old criteria was Mike Easton versus Chase Beebe and absolutely incomprehensible, even to this day incomprehensible, but uh, under especially under the old criteria, just completely, thoroughly incomprehensible to the point where you have to ask like whether the judges should be investigated, you know, that that bad, like you just cannot understand it. Um, that one's really bad. That was, uh, in terms of refing, dude, how about, I mean, we just saw it with Tony Weeks, that shit, yeah. again, dude, I'm not the first person to like cry corruption. Neither are you. We don't really go to that very often. But I'm just going to be honest. Like, dude, when you see something so bad, so bad that you're like, dude, a human being who's been doing this for some time couldn't possibly, like, you'll get them right, you'll get them wrong. You'll get ones that people feel strongly about. But then every once in a while, one happens where you're like, it's not possible for someone who does this for a living to do it this poorly. Right. It's not it's not possible, actually. So something else has to be afoot. They have to be blind in one eye. I didn't tell you they have to be taking a bribe and, you know, whatever. Like the like something has to be off with them. And I don't know what that was in any, any of these cases or maybe there's not. I mean, they're just absolutely, you know, old and brain damaged, whatever. But it makes you at least think that when you see a decision like uh, Easton over BB or Tony Week stopping it for. Rolly Romero well, over, uh, over Barroso. I think the you know we we've said time and again that we believe the Haney Loma controversy is overblown, and they may not have gotten it right, but it doesn't mean it was a major controversy, in our opinion. But in relation to Tony Weeks stopping Barroso versus uh, Rolly under those circumstances, and missing the knockdown before it, that was clearly a push. I did get some people long after the fact going, "Hold on, like, because here's the problem, Luke." This isn't like a natural villain. This is Tony Weeks. Like, dude, he's the guy that made Corrales Castillo one, you know, go from an uh, an all time great fight to maybe the greatest fight of all time. Maybe he was the referee on uh, the unfortunate bout with uh, Idos your Boston your Bostonly taking on David Morrell Jr. on Showtime a couple months back uh, in the in the super middleweight division that led to 
to your boss simile uh, being in, a, I think, a medically induced coma and certainly having, you know, a, a life or death scare there. Um, I'm wondering, Luke, if maybe we're overlooking that. Tony Weeks did get get some some smaller level of controversy from that fight for not stopping it when it became so one-sided. Do you think there's a chance that Tony Weeks was super, super gun shy? And it's not that that makes the situation better, but at least it helps you understand it. So you're not living in the, oh God, when does Tony Weeks' new Corvette show up in his driveway and this sport sucks? And why do we ever wait? Why do we always waste our time here? I, I don't, I impression? never, I never understand these arguments at all. It's like, dude, the decision is not good or bad because Tony Weeks made one out of regret or, uh, you know, he is reacting to something that previously happened. Either it's good or it's bad because it's in the fucking strike zone, period. Like, whether or not he has some motivation based on a, another uh, job, and I, I, I don't remember the details of that fight enough to say he did that job poorly or not, so that's not what I'm suggesting. But to answer your question about whether or not he is influenced by these factors, um, dude, none of that matters <laughs> what only matters is did you do this job effectively in this instance yeah no or he, not? Didn't. he didn't and he simply fucking did not like he did not I, well he the reason not. why that 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 does matter is because in boxing luke you don't tend to lose your job for that <laughs> so it's usually like we just have to figure out corruption or not corruption that's what we're trying to figure I, out I, I, all i need to say is that's fair but when i say it doesn't not matter fair. what i mean okay. is what, what, what i mean is when we're judging whether or not a referee's uh, interference was justifiable, please, you know, not, not to you, but like everyone out there, you can absolutely disregard all of those other factors. They are judged on their ability to meet the requirements of what a stoppage should look like under what conditions. Either they meet the, the, that threshold or they do not. And if they're so clearly departed from it, whether or not they felt something or they were reacting to something else that had happened to them, absolutely fucking irrelevant you need to be able to execute the job as it requires every time irrespective of previous incidents sure, get the sure. fuck no, out of no here problem. with that and obviously for boxing there's a ton of comparisons of of you know worst in both categories i mean pacquiao bradley won for a decision canelo triple g won for parts of that decision um you know everyone goes to and they should luke uh chavez versus pernell whitaker which was a draw in the Alamo Dome on Showtime pay-per-view, yet was a clear Pernell Whitaker win in, with our eyesight. Um, and, you know, for referee stoppages, everybody goes, of course, to Chavez versus Meldrick Taylor. Although I still defend Richard Steele in that very gray area of that. You know, if you see a fighter who needs to be stopped, it doesn't matter if there's one, three seconds left on the, you know, three seconds, one second left or, or, or a hundred, you know, like you stop it. But, you know, certainly we've had questionable stoppages in boxing and big fights in terms of the timing. And to be fair, usually all of them involve Don King, just to be fair, Luke, in terms of historic <laughs> sense, just so we're all on the same page here in this great sport. Uh, let's go over to a man named Wok. I mean, it could be a woman, Luke. I'm not trying to be rude here, but W-A-K, Wok. Curious if Luke has seen a fighter that can be put on the same level as Chewbacca when it comes to being bout it, bout it. Well, first of all, don't you dare besmirch the name of Chewbacca by comparing any mortal man yeah. to that excellent motherfucker, number one. Should there be a comparison? Because you you not only have to be a loyal friend and be about it, about it, you have to be a badass. You have to be kind of hilarious too. You have to drink and smoke and get chicks, uh, human chicks, actually. Um I See, I'd say Tony Ferguson, but he's he's a little too out there. Like Chewbacca's also kind of laid back a little bit, you know. You yeah, see that gif yeah. of him like rubbing. You know, he's like, yeah, I got the ladies on my side, you know. Chewbacca was was laying pipe. God only knows what he's got in his dungarees. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, so no, like this is why Chewbacca's one of a kind, dude. Because all your friends who are about about it are kind of aggro. You know, they're, all, they're about about it because they're always on edge. Chewbacca is yeah. the one hitting the ball. And it's like, Chewbacca, we got to go fuck this guy up. And Chewbacca's like, I don't want to go. It's like, come on, man. We fucking need you. And he's like, all right, all right, I'll go. Yeah. He puts the ball down. Then he goes and rips someone's arms out of their socket. You know, there's no one. You don't have a friend like that. No, no, you don't. You certainly don't. I don't. Uh, let's go over to Matthew Salera. 
He wants to know who would win 18 holes of golf, BC or LT. Interesting Ooh. question here, Luke. I've never played 18 holes of golf. Have you? What does that even mean? You've never played 18? You serious? I've never once in my life. All right. How often do you golf nine holes then? Once every couple of years, if that. Yeah. See, I'm on that path too. I'm on like the once every six to seven years. I do have clubs, but they were from an old guy in Florida who was half my size that died and my dad inherited them and gave them to me, Luke. So it's always embarrassing, but I do have the clubs to like show up with. If you were like, yo, dude, let's go golfing next time. I'd be like, all right, I guess here's my clubs. And then you'd laugh at me, but I would be okay with it because I hate golf, Luke. Um, but you know, I, I can put together like an okay stretch. The problem is that once it goes off the rails with like, you know, hitting a shot behind you or like, you know, just something ridiculous. It's my, my night's over. My day's over, Luke. It's over. It's over. You know what I mean? Like I'm competent for a certain amount of time, but then I turn into uh, a gremlin. <laughs> I, I wanted to see how long I could mouth breathe before you would interrupt. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a, you're think, a gremlin no matter what. So am I. It would be a gross game of golf, but I think I could beat you over 18 is what I'm saying. Uh, it sounds like you could. Yeah, it sounds like you could. But I'm I do, bad. I do putt-putt once a year. What's that? Uh, like mini golf. You're talking like, about miniature you know, golf? Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about because you know how there's an in between. What do they call it? Chip and putt. There's an in between of miniature golf and golf. It's like a three hole thing where you have like a putter and a chipper. You know what I'm talking about? No, I've actually never seen that. Yeah, they're basically uh, you go to golf courses that have this little side area and there's like three mini golf holes and you like chip to tee off and then you'd put yeah i don't know whatever dude whatever. dc has this um you know it has really good public resources obviously like any kind of public golf course is going to be ass compared to congressional which is you know the quite the opposite but uh you know what i noticed that they did do when i was there last time because I, I go to the driving range i do like the driving range that, that, that part is my favorite i noticed that they were converting certain parts of the golf course to the one where people are doing like like kicking soccer balls into these giant holes have you seen that no they're calling it foot golf i'm not doing a bit like 60 minutes of the whole special on it i kind of ignored it and then a year later i saw it at my fucking local public golf course where they're oh. it's like you i don't know if you play 18 holes or not i'm not exactly sure the rules but they have giant holes like this and you actually kick like a soccer ball like you would like if you were golfing you opening kick and then you kind of put it you know all that shit I don't know. Anyway, I feel like it's a, a game for bored white people who are also losers and probably, you know, <laughs> who grew up as only children and they played alone a lot. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you know, the, the kind of person you just don't want buying an AR-15. I'll just leave it at yeah. that, you know, but yeah, they're they probably play tennis, too. And they're yeah, I know. I know that um, I played yeah, pickleball the other day. I played pickleball. How was that, Luke? Uh, Pretty fun. It's like, you know, do you want to play tennis? Just run less. <laughs> Are you are you too are you not skilled enough and you don't want yeah. to run as much? Let's just narrow it a little bit. You know, Jay Aaron has has a hot friend, and the two of them are like a championship local pickleball doubles team. Yep the uh, the lady and the cuck. <laughs> All right, let's go over to Mister Damn Fine. Damn. Uh, we'll be the judge of that, sir. Uh, when are we going to see you two box each other in virtual oh reality? Get the f oh, in virtual That's reality? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. VR, look, VR. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe soon. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. VR kind of sucks, you know? It's not it that great. Suck. And you get sweaty, too, when you're doing it. Like, like they have, like, a. you ever go to the arcade and they got the VR thing and you put the headset on and it's fun, but yeah. then you get, like, all sweaty and it's. Yeah, you know what? Wake me up when VR is, like, Tron. And I get to go and be in like the future or some shit. Yeah. As long as I have to walk around and just hang out with other losers who don't want to interact in society, man. You know, you, you, I mean, I'd like stuff. to hang out less with at Zuck than I already do right now, Luke. So I'm yeah. staying away from all VR components moving forward. Uh, this yeah. one's from Poetissin. What 90s song? Look, are you dying over there? Dude, I uh, I got I wasn't sick when I first got up this morning, but I am sick now. Oh, for sure. yeah. Newark train station, baby. Yeah, I mean, yeah, catching up with you. There it is. Uh, which 90s song would you two use to describe each other? 
Newark air is like just the Newark train station air is just getting like teabagged by the wind. It's just filth and feces yeah. running yeah. across your face. Um, uh, sorry, what was what was the, the question? What 90s song would describe me? And then I have to give the answer about you. So I have to pick a 90s song that would describe you. Yeah, please go with I Touch Myself by the Divinals if you want <laughs> yes. full accuracy. Yeah, purposes. that or Jeremy by Pearl Jam. Oh, BC spoken <laughs> class today. Seemed a harmless little. But yeah. Um, Luke, for you, I would go with uh, Bitch by Meredith Brooks or um, uh, <laughs> or probably um, probably something by like Alice in Chains, Luke, right? I was going to say no. uh, Alanis Morissette because BC will also go down on you in a theater. Not really. He, I mean, he <laughs> will do <laughs> I, Only if Uncle Joey is a part of this equation. Cut that out, Luke. Yes. Yeah, that was him, dude. That was really I him. I know. This, this She had a number one hit talking about how mad she was she she had to blow Uncle Joey. We're like, we could have told you that. We we could have told you that wasn't a yeah. listen, listen, Atlantis. Yeah. Listen, we yeah. we could have told you that was not gonna be a money experience. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes like we could have warned you. Uh let's keep it going here. Luke, this is Gavin Roland. Um, very serious MMA question. If Francis is able to secure this big boxing fight he's chasing, assuming he loses, how much would that hurt PFL? Seems like alongside the inactivity, Francis's stock would take a big hit with a boxing loss. No, 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 no. Like I mean, Mayweather you know, McGregor, did he have yeah. something to sell about it afterwards? Yes, he did. So, you know, if he goes in there and just gets stopped in 30 seconds, BC, you would agree, yeah, that's probably pretty bad. But if he has well, some, whatever it looks like, some moment of redemption, some moment of flair that people remember and enjoy and appreciate – doesn't matter if he loses after that. Adam. Absolutely. Uh, I do think, like, let's say a worst-case scenario, that he gets knocked out cold early, just like you don't belong in here. I think there's intrigue in seeing him come back and fight MMA, but if you're PFL, then you would really need to get an opponent that we would be like, oh, that guy could win, right? You know what I mean? Like, we, you'd have to yeah. utilize that doubt from that boxing match to some degree, but I don't, I don't know. Dude, Francis got a good chin, too. A great chin. I mean, Francis has a will. He's yeah. got a will, Luke. Exactly. Right, so, we'll so he also might get um, handled and stopped. But yeah, um, I again, think it, it, there's a scenario where like it could go badly, but there's a lot of scenarios where it doesn't necessarily go badly. Right. There's not a lot of scenarios, well. by the way, where he wins or is in a position to have a chance to win outside of again the puncher's chance. But there is scenarios that he exceeds our expectations, shows a ton of heart, and maybe even has you going, "Oh crap, maybe this guy could box if he decides to," you know. That would be like the best. And that's where we were at post Maymac. to be fair, dude. Let's not. I know we kind of rewrote it over the years because it seems now we're more aware that Floyd like waited him out to a degree. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like Connor let all his punches out for four rounds and then started walking him down and exposing his lack of everything. Gas tank, all that. But true or false, Luke, we exited Maymac saying Connor could do this for a living if he wanted to. Uh, or I think we that he had uh, could do it for a living. I don't know. I don't. I didn't come out of that necessarily saying not, that. Not but. be a champion, but we were like he looks like he could transition. I, I I felt that was fair from that. No, I did not get that opinion. But what I what I did say. Well, and what which I kind do of think, transition are you talking about in like the male to female way? You thought based on that he could be a successful boxer if he Word? wanted to yes i was impressed by the footwork and technique not the not the power it wasn't there but the footwork and technique it did impress me it wasn't like he was without like showing you that he's a novice no he he was a novice but dude like nah. we thought he was going to get I think that's, mm, dude i mean mayweather's a salesman connor's a little bit tricky at first Dude, he the way he got walked down in that tenth round, he'd get walked down by a lot of guys. And Mayweather was old in that fight. You can pretend like he wasn't. He was. Yeah, that's um, a fair point. You know, like I don't know. I just felt like he had made the transition. Dude, he performed. He serious. He could have. Here's what I do think is possible. Like I want to be clear. Like Connor is a great striker. The fact that he's not a good boxer is not to say irrelevant, but that's really not what I judge him on. I judge him on what he actually 
tries in and it's a different combat sport with different leverages different ranges different weapons different timing different durations different i mean it's ever it's so different i don't expect him to be good at boxing i think it's kind of silly to expect him to be good at boxing i expect him to be good at mma and during that stretch he was fucking excellent at it right so you know that's how i that's how i judge him but what i do did think was possible after fighting mayweather was he could get another big fight. Now, I didn't know what that was or who it would be. That part was a little bit unclear, but like, would people pay for this again from McGregor and could he turn in another performance like this that gave some life to the idea that he could win? But did I think he could go box? No, I did not think he could go box. I mean, I'm a, I only meant that if he had done it full time, if he had transitioned, but I thought the, the foundation and the base was there. But maybe I'm wrong. Look, dude, let's he, go to Jack go, he can't go 10 rounds. Like, how are you going to go 12? You know, that's fair. That's also fair. I mean, why can't he? Because, you know, look, I, I, I rewatched Poirier two and three recently. Why does Connor always gas out? I don't know if it's his resource management. Like, do I think he's a good athlete? Yes. Do I think he trains hard? Yes. Do I think that he trains probably in the way that he's supposed to for the most part? Now, there's been camps where I think that's been true. Also been true that like, you know, Alvarez didn't push him that night. I wonder if Alvarez had pushed him. Would we have seen a night where Connor could do it? Like we've only seen the ones where he couldn't because like the second Nate fight was at 170. So that's but not he the best was coming. He was coming off of the second night Nate fight where he survived all of the areas that normally would have led him to a stamina induced stoppage loss. He in the Nate fight at 202, he he nipped all of those scare moments in the bud and came back with more. So maybe he used would he use that momentum into the Eddie fight at that point? Ed, Ed, Ed you know, Ed, Ed, who's Ed? Uh, Luke Thomas. Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, yeah Eddie all I'm pointing out is like it's not to say that I don't think he can go those kinds of distances, but uh, whether it's the way he punches, whether it's the way he manages himself, like and again, dude, the way you move in the boxing ring will also affect your cardio. You have to have. For 12-round elite fighting, you have to have very efficient footwork by and large, and especially in that weight class. And, uh, I, you know, he's got a very, very different kind of footwork. It's lethal. It's great. It's just not perfectly built for duration, you know. Let's go over to Jack Suddeth. What do us fans have to do for Brian to put on a gi and roll with Luke? Oh, my God. What is up with these guys? Like, what are you two guys? <laughs> All of these end in us banging, apparently, Luke. Yeah, I mean, when are you two happening? guys just going to get it over with <laughs> and just bang? Uh, Have some yeah. mouth sex. Uh, Luke, is there a scenario? On, I mean, really? I mean, here's the deal. If the closest it could come is this. You know how we, like, we're kind of building a nice little connection with Gilbert Burns. We've gone to his gym twice to interview him. Yeah. Let's say ahead of the next fight, he invited us back. And let's say he was like, hey, man, you want to come do like a workout thing on tape? We'll, we'll have yeah, fun with he, it. Which he would not do, but yeah. Which he wouldn't. I get it. And then you and I had a gi on and we were talking trash. And then like Henry Hooft walks by and he's like, hey, who would, you know, who would win, you know, between you guys right there? And Luke's like, I'm not doing that. My back, my, 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 my vagine, you know, and I'm like, yo, I'll take that dude on right now with the doc cams going. Let's do it, bro. And we did it, Luke. Yeah. What would it would happen? go it would go very poorly for you yeah do you think yeah. i would i would give up full mount fairly quickly or what full mount or the back yeah either one what if i took the strategy that brendan Schaub took against that uh that jiu oh again i'm gonna bray you and just like yeah 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 uh it yeah. would go well for you it would go well for you go well for it. all right all right all right Luke. there we go all right uh let's keep this going hey before you we... can't say he got submitted he didn't get submitted. oh you can't you can't no, i mean he barely got touched you. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even have to use his stand-up skills, Luke. Oh, look you know? at you! I mean, just being gratuitous, just gratuitous. Try to, you, boy. Are you? Let me ask you a question, BC. Are you a little hungry for some Reddit love? Is that what's happening here? No, no, not at all. I'm oh, trying word. to distance myself from all hateful oh, platforms. Luke. Thank uh, you very much. <laughs> No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Uh, I like comedy, though. I'll tell you that much. Like good comedy, I like that a lot, Luke. You know what I mean? What do we? Uh, let's go. What, I gotta sit down. Someone recommend to me because I I'm always being a hater about this, but I don't know any better. You know, what is a good Burt Kreischer uh, thing to watch? Where if you like, okay, so here's the here's the thing. Imagine <laughs> man boobs. Look, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. But imagine someone was like, show me something from Burt Kreischer that is like. In like the funniest thing he's got, and it's not that long Russian bit where like though he never gets to the punchline. 
I'm talking about the like something else. What else does he have? What is it? What would that be? Does he just masturbate know. on stage? Just you know. <laughs> Uh, we got a instead, question here. Instead from, of instead of smashing watermelons, he's just busted. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gallagher by has evolved by the way, his product. Yeah. By the way, so our producer on MK loves Burt Kreischer, and every time he's like, "Yo, yo, I like Burt. Don't you be besmirching his yo, name." Mike, Mikey did go to bat for Burt, like out of nowhere. It was like, "No, that's my guy. That's my guy." You know. So he's got stand-up specials on Netflix. Are they long? Oh, dude, Mikey is challenging you to us to watch the Burnt Chrysler stand-up special on Netflix. Yo, we should do an MK review on that shirtless bastard, Luke. All right, homework. Yeah, he's saying uh, he goes. I that he says that Mikey says that he goes to bat for the guys that we're wrong about, including BC Allen W. Wow, he's boy, he's laying, he's throwing down the thunder there, my friend. Oh, he's throwing down Danger Mouse as well, Luke. I think we ran him off, unfortunately. Hey, where do you think Damien the Donk is right now? Prison. I hope not. Prison. I mean, he's like a single dad, you know. He was like a podcaster. Yeah, I hope not him too. Tattoo of a a toddler hanging on his chest. That was like, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It was intense. That was very intense. Imagine um, if your CPA had that. Like, would you trust them? It's like, guys, here's your refund. It's only going to be $300 this year. It's like, I don't trust your math. You have a dead yeah. kid hanging on your chest. You know? Yeah, yeah. Is there, a, is there yet a uh, term for showing... What's the word I'm looking for, Luke? Like... Like, uh, because of tattoos, like if you like showing a bias or a, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like a stereotype against people with tattoos, like, like you said, not high, not hiring them for the job because they have a neck tat. So you assume that they're crazy and that they steal. Oh yeah. There's all kinds of that. Yeah. Oh, like lawsuits and everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know about where. Where's this question going? I don't know who fucking cares. Can you read the next one? <laughs> who cares? Oh wow, Luke, you look you look like me trying to figure out that SAT math problem there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I, oh, I wasn't I wasn't sick like like this like even two hours ago, and now I'm like, dude, yeah. what the fuck? Maybe you're breaking out in hives, Luke, because you're nervous. Um, I think my daughter sneezed in my face a few days ago, and this is yeah. the result. Kids, bro, uh, they just bring home every disease known. Oh, to they love getting sick. Yeah, they're the worst. Uh, Bullfrog Actual <laughs> says, "Are there any UFC fighters that you want to see compete in BKFC? Will Mike Perry's success be repeated?" So, Luke, let's say we could get we could like. Dude, magically- most of the time when people want to see a UFC fighter compete in BKFC, it's almost as punishment. Like, I hope you have to fight yeah. in BKFC. You know. I mean, they're probably a lot of them are going to end up there anyway, so you'll get your wish. But Luke, is there anybody who's active now and not like at Tony Ferguson level where they may actually be in BKFC in one more fight that you're like, you know what? I actually would be intrigued by watching them pull a Mike Perry. Uh, I mean, Mike Chandler, honestly, I wouldn't want him to do it, but like, would it be good? Yes, it would be good. Shavkat Rachmanov, Hamzat Chemaev, like, you know, any of those guys who just kind of bite down on Bali or no. Uh yeah, maybe to an extent. She sure. can punch. Look, she's tough as tough as nails. She can punch for sure. Uh, let's go over to Penn Deegan. Why does Brian like so many strawweight fives? This is that's such a rude question, Luke. Because first of all, they're tens to me. <laughs> they're what? They're tens to me, Luke. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was the question about strawweights? Why does Brian like so many strawweight fives? That's that's a meaning that's like a, meaning he's a, meaning this person writing the question is evaluating them from looks and then right which I them which which is not what we do can. anyway in our MMA fandom so it's you know it's dude Brian you know uh, Brian has the strangest taste in women I've ever seen um, it's like <laughs> he uh, I like to watch realistic movies Luke okay <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I'm yeah saying? but not like depressing. You no, know, stop like, that. Stop you know, that. your wife is lovely, so th- th- I'm not counting that. But like the women, like you, kind of show me in office, like, "Yo, isn't this great?" I'm always like, "BC, this is quite obviously fucking terrible. Why would you even think this is a good like?" No, 
he'll be like, what are we talking about? And then it'll be a white person. I'll be like, oh. Oh, there, there you he go. Just, yeah. He just graded them yeah. on a curve, you know. He's meanwhile, curve. meanwhile, Luke shows me these women. I'm like, have you seen her face? Luke's like, nope. You know what I show him? I show him Latin women with big old fat asses, and he's like, oh, that's gross. And I'm like, it's not. It's not. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I ever said the word gross, but it, you know, it, it's very aggressive, Luke. It's very, it's a lot, you know. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Thank the good Lord, you know. It's a lot going on there. Uh, thank you. Let's go over to Twin Nightmare. Uh, what would it take for both of you guys to share a blunt with an MK donk? A blunt? <laughs> <laughs> like, just show up and offer one. We'll probably just smoke it. You know, it's not like, yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no grand process. It's not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You don't have to win a fucking ticket. Just show what up. What if we had one. a contest where every time we're in studio, Luke, uh, one lucky MK fan is chosen to pay their own way to fly to Jersey City and then be waiting outside the door with a blunt as we leave? That That's really the contest. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just show up. Yeah, that's it. All right, there you go. Uh, Luke, let me let me rephrase that. If I offered you a chance to share a vape pen or a blunt with any UFC fighter for 15 minutes, who are you picking right now? I, I don't know how you... Well, you said UFC it's, fighter, and it, and right? It's you and me. It's you, me, and the fighter you choose for 15 minutes. What, who are you Well, picking? I would have said Nate Diaz, but he's not a UFC fighter, so that doesn't count. Um. So under that condition, we got 15 minutes to hit the pipe, hit the pen. Um, I said hit the pipe. Um, whew, that's a good one. Um, you wanna? I don't know. I don't really. I haven't thought about that. That's a great question. I don't. What do you think, BC? Um, I mean, Derek Lewis would have to be high up in this conversation if you're going to look yeah. into maximizing the. Uh, you know, Mikey, you wrote Tai Tuivasa in there. Was that for this category or something different? Probably something different. But Luke would would oh no for BKFC, Mikey wants Tai oh, Tuivasa. Yeah, That's a, a great call, pick, yeah. by the way, on there. Yeah. Um, you know, I could offer Rashad Evans, but he's not active. Luke, um, I don't like. Who do you look at as a fighter right now that you like? Don't really know. You may not have interviewed them yet or extensively, but you're like, you know what? They look kind of interesting. They would be the answer for this question. I don't know about that, but like Corey Sandhagen's from Colorado. That seems like a good candidate, you know? Yeah. I'm and I bet he's Brian not. Ortega. I bet he's a chill high, too. Dude, Brian Ortega is the pick here. You know what I mean? Walk me through it. it he's going to have tremendous stories, right? You just want to smoke and then stare into his dreamboat eyes. <laughs> is, is that a, is that what all you're just tired of looking at my ugly face and you want to look at something a little bit better than that? I mean, I don't blame you. Uh, uh, I bet he'd be cool as shit too. Is really where I'm going with that, Luke. But yeah, he. I mean, maybe we could just skip the, and go right to where his stories would end up. You know, you never know, Luke. Um, and just, I mean, like, would you be interested? Well, you know what? If, if I, I won what? this contest and I picked Joanna, would you join the trio? No. How about Johnny Walker, dude? My man's got some stories, right? About yeah. Just dicking down half of Europe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's that's. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, do you think that if we ever do another live show, we not only should have a meet and greet, we should have a post meet and greet outside, uh, where the, where the donks just, just provide blunts for you, Luke. Is that, is that really? Great. Uh, yeah, that'd be, yeah. I'd be, I'd be in favor of that. Mm -hmm. What if I told you that of the 10 blunts that we would sample, at least one is rolled with GHB and one of our listeners is, is, you know, it's just, you know what I'm saying? I mean, would you still take that risk? The old Appy special, huh? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a one in ten chance that you end up like most of Appy. Surprise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you missing a kidney. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, you know. So listen, you got to roll the dice, play the game. All yeah. right. Uh, this one's Luke from Kellen Jenkins. This is for both of you. What are your three favorite bands and three favorite rappers of all time? Luke, who are your three favorite bands of all time? I guess he's basically saying. The bands would be rock music, and then rap would be hip hop. Luke, okay. So oh, if we're gonna you know, separate, I, that... I thought about this the other day. Like Metallica put out some album recently, and I haven't even listened to it. And when I was a kid, you know, uh, especially around Injustice for All and the Black album, like I loved Metallica. I even loved Metallica. I tried to like you know tell myself that the 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 load and reload phase wasn't a big deal, and 
but obviously everything before that was just tremendous you know i really love those first like five albums basically and oh, yeah. uh and um but what i even put them on the list i haven't even listened to their new album i don't even care you know you don't have like go to your favorite bands of all time that someone's like who are your three favorite bands of all so time? for sure something? for sure the answer for number one is very easy it's pantera right i mean okay like it's pantera like Would that's you put the beatles one. in your top three luke you do talk about them well you're favorite. asking like who are like the three most influential or the three ones that like i like the most i'm just i'm asking your three favorite your three favorite so i put pantera on that list i'd probably put helmet on that list helmet wow all right i love helmet i love helmet um after that dude i'm not sure like growing up it would have been metallica but like now that's just it sounds like christian dad rock to me it doesn't it's not interesting at all um so and i know a lot of metallica fans my age disagree whatever so i don't know like tool would be another one i like a lot uh, that i listen to a lot wow. um all right all right, uh, some, this, something this, like Deftones, yeah. maybe for a okay. Time. These yeah. these bands you offered as potential top three were better than I thought we would end up. I really did. So that's that's. I know. You, I know. You think I'm like abortion, AIDS, and uh, yeah. pimples? Those are my three favorite bands. <laughs> it's a little more to it than I that. I mean, sometimes you you do you do stray to those areas, Luke. I would go with uh, the Jimi Hendrix Experience, the Birds, and maybe traffic or Joni mitchell i mean at times a uh, bob dylan could fit in there the beatles had been in there before the stones the dead i mean look you know i've been around those circuits but um you know i'd probably go jimmy the birds and uh Joni. i'm sorry luke she took over a big part of my life the last few years and i don't think i'm getting it back and i'm i'm okay with it uh luke, three favorite hold rap. on what's your favorite alanis morissette song you gotta have one yeah i like um head over heels the best oh you or are over such feet. a bitch Head over feet. Is that what it's called? That Head word? over heels. God, you suck, dude. That's Head the best feet, you can right? come up with. Look, dude, don't it's, be surprised. It's obviously, I, love I got one hand in my pocket no, that and the other so one's funny. giving up. Giving peace up. Sign. Peace not, yeah, no, no that, one, that one's lame. She's pretty, in hindsight, she's pretty lame, but she was cool. Admit it. She had good videos and there was enough rockers that when that debut record came out, it, it was kind of fire for a bit. It Jagged was. Little Pill was like the biggest thing in music when it was out. It's hard to explain yes. that to anybody now, but like, you know how big Bad Bunny is now? Alanis Morissette was bigger than that. Like she was fucking yeah. enormous. That's, at that that's time. in the conversation for the greatest. It, it wasn't in my top 10 recently when we did this exercise, but the greatest debut albums in rock history, like that's got to be yeah, considered. Yeah, yeah. It's so Her follow up shit. shit wasn't as good, but Jagged Little yeah. Pill, like my first real girlfriend I had, came like after that uh, like high school girlfriend came after that uh, album was released and it was like her favorite record you know it was a big deal so yeah look i tend to like the ballads i'm a ballad guy Luke. you know what i mean i, I can mean, see I'm that like, i can i i didn't realize you were like you uh you got a little me i'm like oh the ballad part you can just cut that shit out you know yeah yeah you know i have i have uh feelings and warm blood inside of me look that's that's definitely for real dude um, there's a bands there's bands like kill switch and gauge and uh, they got these like hardcore names but if you listen to like their music, it's not what it what the name gives off. You think like, oh, they're just devil rock. No, Killswitch Engage, they'll do like the heavy riffing, and then in every song they stop to like sing a pretty tune that's like very melodic. And a lot of people like that. And to yeah. me, it's like, dude, stick with the song you were fucking making. Yeah. You don't have to have these like, rap songs. Why is there so much dialogue in this film? Just you know, be a master storyteller and don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Tell so stories like with like your that. balls. Yeah, please. Dude, I got to tell you, go. you, I got to tell you, the new Cattle Decapitation album, not doing a bit, I know you hate on them. The new one, Terracite, is legit. One of my favorite tracks, We Eat Our Young. Great song. Yeah, they eat what they kill, Luke. We know that at the end of the day. Um, Luke, <laughs> they also asked your three favorite rappers. Uh, let's also throw in hip-hop bands. Like, what are your... Uh, Hip hop artists, who do you who, who would you say are your three favorite of all time? Probably Vinnie Paz as, as a solo artist or like groups or groups or solo, like whatever, like uh, artists, you know. So I would put Vinnie Paz slash Jedi Mind Tricks, and that's a little bit hard to separate the two. There is he does have some solo work, but there, you know, it's just he's really kind of a total package in that sense. Sean Price, easy. Sean Price has been one of the most, I mean, here's my Sean Price, you know, right there. Um, Shaw Price figurine. Is that, a, is that a white guy or a black guy, Luke? Shaw Price is black. He is black. Yeah, very black. Uh, black Muslim from uh, from uh, Bushwick or I should say Brownsville, uh, Brooklyn. 
and then after that, I it's kind of wide open. Um, maybe I'd say Scarface. I love fucking Scarface, man. From like, from the Ghetto Boys, you talking about? Yeah, that Scarface? dude, Scarface, dude, Scarface is just amazing. An amazing storyteller, hardcore gangster rapper with a southern edge. Um, golly, dude, I yeah, it's Scarface. Scarface has given me. You know, you ever think back to some of the times that music brought you the most joy, whether you're happy or sad, just yes. brought the most joy. There was a time in my life, um, I'll find the song. I forget the name of it now. I haven't listened to it in so long because it's, the lyrics are so hardcore. I had to kind of keep it out of rotation. Um, he goes, I'm a bank robber. Woo! I'm a natural born killer. Uh, drug dealer. Oh, God, what's the name of that song? It's Anyway, it's it that, that song brought me so much joy when i first heard it i could not believe how good it was let me pull that yeah one in the parking lot of big chicken with some whippets uh luke i would go with no no, uh, no that was later called... that was i was in my 20s by that point uh a tribe called quest i would go with no i, I would go with public enemy because i owned everything they ever made but that does age me but i you know that's fine luke um you know i was a part of that commercial rap era even though they're not really known as a commercial act uh, more uh, a political yes. act but uh, the third one, you know, I'd probably go Tupac there, Luke, for the third one, you know, because, you know, I liked I like some gimmicky rap, though, and you would make fun of me like I was real into like Black Sheep and, um, of course, third base. And uh, yeah, but whatever. No one. Yeah, no dude, one the, the, the hook for this song is I can squeeze without blinking. I'm a cold blooded. Your favorite word. Bank robber. Woo. I'm a natural born killer. Drug dealer. Anything it took to survive, uh, and it goes on from there, dude. It's that it's the song is called "In Co Cold Blood." It's from the uh, the Fix album. Absolute fucking artwork, artwork. Looks like uh, I learned so much life wisdom from Scarface, Thank dude. You. I you, you see here's the this is the okay okay let's best let's stop for just a moment. This is where where you begin to be racist. This is this is the line right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the line because you hear this stuff and what you do is you make the common error yes. that what you're hearing is maybe meant for mass production, which to some extent, of course, all this artwork is that's got a major label under it. But no, more to the point that not only is there anything not really redeeming about the artwork, but that there actually isn't much art mastery in there or wisdom or something clever to be told. And in fact, when you actually begin to really engage with the material, there is a significant amount of wisdom that comes from Luke. it. In this particular case, this is merely storytelling. I get what that. Was, <laughs> what was largely lost in the risen debacle, Ryzen, to yeah. be fair. Um, yeah, you're being you're being like someone's dad that, when you do that. You know, I really wasn't against Japan or Ryzen in that scenario, Luke. I was against you. Okay, so I that's know. you know that's know. also a, a big part of it. Luke, this gentleman also wants to know your three favorite adult film stars. I, I mean, you know, Rocco, and then we can move on, right? You know, uh, <laughs> no, Rocco's gross, dude. All these guys who breathe through their teeth. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm done with this part of the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm not gonna do it again. But are you not with me? It's like, <laughs> please stop breathing through your teeth. Please stop. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. Yeah, there you go, Luke. Uh, let's go over to 21 Randy O. <laughs> Do you think part of the reason Nganu MMA fight isn't until 2024 is to see if the PFL will finalize the Bellator purchase by then and maybe have him fight Ryan Bader? Luke, that did seem to be a hot rumor at one point, the PFL Bellator thing, but I, I feel like that rumor has come and gone. Is that, would, is that, would that be an accurate statement? Say that again? That The whole Bellator PFL rumor, I don't feel like that's as hot as it once was. Yeah, I mean, the latest I've heard, I mean, I want to be clear, they were in the running uh, to buy it. That was real. Um, it sounds like it's going to go in a different direction, but nothing's finished or done or... So, it sucks because that would have been that would have been good. That would have been good for PFL to get them. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they have enough money or whatever, but um, that would have been huge to just buy that segment and put those two organizations. Maybe they'll co-promote. Who knows? But I don't know. I feel like an opportunity is lost there. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you know how we were talking about 
potential Francis PFL debut opponents that we'd be okay with. And as the things are laid out right now, there's certainly uh, very little information or, or potential out there. We can all throw out Overeem or kickboxers or whatever. But Luke, have you defi- identified anyone for real that if it was that you would want nothing to do with and you don't approve? Like if it ends up being Nganu debuting in the PFL against Big Ben Rothwell, are you out? Yeah, I would not. I mean, d- dude, like, he, like, take the PFL for where they're at on this. Take take them for where they're at. They, um, they want an opponent that can sell on pay per view. Fine, get one. Like, I'm not going to grade them on a curve. You know, getting yeah. Francis was yeah. big, but I'm not interested in Francis versus you know Bruno Capelazzo. Uh, See, I'd actually be more interested in a post-USADA Bruno Capaloza than any other old name you can drum up that has a UFC, ex-UFC attached to his name. You know what I mean? Fine, but it's not going to sell a pay-per-view, and it's not really what I want to spend my money on personally. No, no, you're right. All those things are true. If you're going to do this, do it. Get the get do it the right way to the best of your capabilities, whatever that looks like. And that's the gamble they made, dude. That's the gamble they made, you know. So right. And that's why, like, you know, uh, we can support Francis on this side of the debate about this if there is one, but we also have to be like, yo, it's also up to the PFL to make this deal work for them. It's not a guarantee. You could say the odds may not even be with them that, that it's possible, even, but let's see what they can do. I mean. I'm just thinking there's got to be a name we're not thinking of that would surprise us. Not Josh Barnett, but that would be one in that category. But is there someone that we're not thinking of that, like, like Crow Cop? No, fucking Crow. Seriously, BC, did you say Crow Cop? Yeah, I guess I did. But something like that, that's a wild card. We're like, oh, yeah, dude, how old is that person? I haven't thought of them in a while. Is there anyone else? I don't know. I don't know. There's the Verdum thing, but... Uh, dude, like again, if they got Brock, yeah, I doubt that could happen, but like, I'm just, yeah. you know, saying, yeah, they got Brock, that'd be something different, yeah, that'd be something <sighs> that'd be huge, yeah, God that'd bless you. Maybe it'll be uh, Maheta when he gets done with uh, Usada, Luke. Maybe we'll find Maybe. out there. Jesus just Christ, I'm sick. Good Lord, well, Luke, it's a good timing, and thank you for shouting out the, the Lord and Savior there. Uh, we, we're out of fan questions now, Luke. We ran through the mailbag, turns out the bag is as empty and deflated now as our own <laughs> you know what i mean our own bags right you know just i mean it's like the accumulation you. of age and, you know misuse and stuff like that. <sighs> but god bless you again and you know god bless the uh those who gave all luke for the for us to celebrate this holiday today of memorial day but we still had to fill the bag right we still had to to you know to, time to make the donuts luke you know i said that to my kids the other day They're like what are you talking about dad luke when i say that you know what i'm talking about right Dunkin' Donuts commercial from the 1980s yeah, man, and time, 90s. Yeah. Time to get out of bed at 3 a.m. and go do what you do because that's that's how that's how we eat. You know what I'm saying? We eat what we kill, Luke, right? Dana's right. Our Luke, you know Dana's always right about one thing. Fighting is in our DNA. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we 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 get it and we like it. You know, thought about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh Luke, um, are you okay with over this past weekend with um Dana giving out uh hotel suites to Robbie Fox and other media members so that they'll cover uh the power slap too? Or are we are we really talking about that right now? I mean what would it serious question, right? Dana calls you up and he goes, Brian yeah. Campbell, what would it take this weekend for you to fly to Vegas and cover slap? And you have to do it professionally, you know, take it for what it is. Yeah, not ironically, what, right? Not yeah. Call call your shot. What's 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 the what's the number? What is it going to take? Walk me through it. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't accept it, Luke, because I've been so... okay. You wouldn't accept it, but let's say you did. Walk me through. Okay, what are you it saying takes. if he was like, "Look, I respect your take. I'm not mad, but I want to give you a chance to be proven wrong. I want you to yeah. attend one card on our dime. You're going to get a suite at the Red Rocks. We'll take you out to dinner. Um, you can you know you could you can. You can have a ring card girl of your choice. No, I mean, that's just, you know, that's not, uh, what do I look like a Fertina here, Luke, right? Uh, no, you know, uh, ultimately, Luke, I think it would be more like uh, I'd have to turn it down, Luke, but maybe if maybe the me from like six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 years ago, what do you think? I mean, I mean, is there a price for you that, all right, I guess it would have to be like your employer going, no, we really want you to do that. Go do that. We think there's big content there. Go do a first person at the the slapdick thing because you've been such a person against it 
go behind the scenes. So Luke, it's a behind the scenes tour now where you are like with Dana the whole day on all, you know, full access to Dana the whole day, but they expect you to write an honest story, you know, video companion story about it afterwards. So let's make it legit. Okay. Cause that's the only, that's the only auspices where this conversation accelerates, right? Unless he's like, I've got a room full of Delta nine and eight <laughs> that you can, we've got a bed that's made out of Delta eight, Luke. You can sleep on that. If you go to this event outside of that, if that's the only way, Luke, would you do that? No, I'm being dead serious. This is what it would take. I'm not, not bullshitting. Uh, you're going to have a car pick me up, right? You're going to put me on a first class flight, period. I mean, nothing less than that. You're going to have a car pick me up from the airport. Um, I'm going to have a suite at the Red Rocks, a full suite, like not a bullshit suite. Uh, I can order out of like room service and not eat it and it all goes to you like no charges yeah, like, go to me it's like a regular trip for me yes, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i wish i fucking wish and then honestly bc are you gonna say i'm doing a bit but we're talking wish list like i can, I can call my shot to the nth degree dude you're gonna wire to my bank account fifty thousand dollars cash you're gonna oh wire my god i thought you were gonna say i get a one-on-one -on -one interview with dana on camera in my hotel room no no, no i don't care about any of that i got i'm trying to put tukey through school you're, please you're like it actually would take 50k 50 it, so you're like whatever bonus they were going to give to that finish on the undercard yeah no, no that's night, coming to know, me that's coming that's to me coming to me yeah um wow wow mikey offered and then i would I'm, go and then i then i would go and i would try to treat it as, as best i could mikey thought that i would pick 20 minute interview alone with Joanna, and i assume he wanted you to pick that you get to slap dana one time Nah, not interested in committing crimes. Not interested no, in that. No. I mean, I just jur the just journalism out, crimes. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, but hopefully Robbie Fox enjoyed that uh, slap a mania too coming your way uh, pretty soon. That's our Memorial Day show, uh, Luke Thomas. We uh, we encourage people to go to youtubecom slash morning combat if you want more fun bonus stuff from Room Service Diaries. To uh, remember, we used to do High Court. That was great. Yeah. Think about the premise one day. You're like, they used to pay us to like sit in the eighth row, put on an English wig in our own studio and just yell at each other. And just, <laughs> you know, Luke, if, this, just if yell. this, if this ride ever ends, we'll look back and we'll say this was a hell of a ride. BC, how many times are we going to record on the roof going forward? <laughs> Like that's over, right? Like they're I mean, yeah, we're not doing that anymore now. I don't dude. know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh I don't know. But uh <laughs> uh shouts to Chuck Mindenhall for no particular reason. Shouts to him. Yeah. I mean, look, can I ask you a question right now in, in MMA yeah. media? Who do you actually like? Uh I like a lot of them, but I don't really like read and follow. Do I I follow uh Bloody Elbow? Um Okay, I want to offer a name. Now, now he he comes across very gas station y despite his law degree, Luke. You know Jed Mesh you from MMA fighting? Yeah, you love Jed, yeah. That guy's good, Luke. I mean, he takes yeah, chances, please. you know. That guy, you know, he I mean, you know, if you if you if you had a guess at his search history, I'd probably agree with you. But outside of that, you know, that guy yeah. that guy's getting after it, you know. Yeah, he 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 he's a hustler. Yeah. Um all right, I guess that's it, Luke. That's all. That's I have it. to take a dump that can only be described as. <sighs> <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have love for John S. Nash, Luke. Not, not. Yes, that. of course I do. I, I said anyone a bloody elbow. I read their stuff. Uh, I read the headlines and stuff, but like I'm mostly focused on what we're doing. I'm not. Oh. The problem See, is, I'm I've a... said this before. No, the thing is, I used to listen to like a lot of different podcasts, and then I found out like I would just kind of like their opinions would just kind of become mine because it was. I was hearing it and I did, I hated the way that was influencing me. So yeah. I kind of would have to go to it afterwards. And now I just don't even go like make that move at all. I so. think some people do that too. They listen to our show and then they have like these opinions and then, you know, but like, you know, we're all swimming in the same pool at the end of the day, Luke, only <laughs> some of us are pissing at it happily and willingly. Yeah, you're you know? bathing, you're bathing in my urine. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the Enjoy. day. All right. That's it. I don't really want, you know, that's it. That's the end of it. Um, thank you, Mikey more mile behind the scenes for uh, being a true American, a Floridian though at that. Like, would you, do you think Mikey has been in Florida long enough to be a, considered a Florida man? Uh, here's the question. Has Mikey ever illegally carried a handgun? I'm not, I'm not sure what it, what is illegal with handguns in Florida, but let's just assume there's some version of that. 
uh, or even just touched his lips on a on a meth pipe, <laughs> oh, wow. or or walked across a highway carrying a dead animal. Has he done any oh, wow. of the three? Like he says, eight years. He's now in Florida. I think that's common law that he is now a Florida yeah. man. Uh, yeah. Luke, I think it's legal to put a to put a Glock in your, the waistband of your sweatpants uh, in Florida. I think that is a legal place. Dude, I used to do a I used to do a bit on my show where they would either like read a real Florida man story or they would make up one, and I had to guess whether it was real. And there was one time they actually played the tape for it later. There was a guy they called the cops on because he was practicing his karate on swans, kicking him in the face and shit. <laughs> stop looking at me swan yes indeed uh we're out of here luke that's it um you know unless you want to count down your favorite expired food items luke you know yeah it's like what's what kind of food that you can't even eat anymore without dying rank your top three yeah thank you uh, mailbag senders all right okay. return to all sender right. we're out of here that's lt on bc thank you for patronizing us uh only fans.com slash i'm sorry cameo.com slash brian campbell for more and on thursdays luke has plenty of options for you to pay him for uh <laughs> <attention>. <laughs> yeah uh morty combat is gone thank you we're out of here yeah bye